Hello, my name is Margeet Frieling and I work for Fairwear Foundation. This short story is about women. Why? Because women represent the majority of garment workers. You probably know that. Women are estimated to represent 70% of the world's poor. The garment sector offers jobs to millions of women. Do you know how many millions? How many women work in your factory? How many women work in the garment industry worldwide? The lowest credible estimate we could find is around 20 million. Over half the world's clothes are made in Asia. Around 75% of garment workers are women. Of course this differs per country. For example, in Bangladesh an estimated 90% of garment workers are women, the majority of whom are young. In Turkey this is around 50%. So, 20 million women in total, give or take. 20 million potential breadwinners for their families, role models for their daughters. You can contribute to lifting these millions of women out of poverty. On average, women earn 18% less than their male counterparts for the same work. In Bangladesh this is 21%. Asia is the continent with the biggest wage gap between men and women. But there's also a hidden wage gap. In Bangladesh, wage letters show clearly that workers in the quality control department earn more than those in, for example, the sewing department. Now guess which department is predominantly male? In Turkey, however, quality control staff are often women. So what do we see in the wage letters for Turkish factories? The quality control department is the lowest paid. Women are the lowest paid in the world. Do you recognize the following scenario? A garment worker falls pregnant and leaves her job before her baby is born because she doesn't get maternity leave. No work means no income. And because of the low wages, she hasn't been able to save any money. So just when she would need extra care and good nutritious food, she's in a situation with no income. She leaves her job to give birth and is back at work just as soon as her feet will carry her because she needs to earn money to feed her children. Maybe your factory already pays for maternity leave. Unfortunately, many other garment factories don't. Another example. In 1919, governments and employers and workers associations agreed on the importance to have a working week reduced to a maximum of 48 hours. They all agreed that working too many hours day after day is detrimental to the health of workers and bad for their performance. Yet now, almost a century later, excessive overtime is one of the most common non-compliances in the garment industry. Of course, this affects all the workers, not just the women. But the impact of these incredibly long working hours is often more negative for women than for men. We've seen cases of women working 16 hours a day, six days in a row. This makes it impossible to also take care of their families. Clearly, it would be in the interest of the 20 million women garment workers to improve their position. But I would argue that it's also in your interest. It will have a positive effect on the performance of the women workers and thus on your company. You and your responsible customers have an opportunity to contribute to improving their situation by providing training to women workers, to their male colleagues, supervisors and managers and by improving or establishing a functioning grievance mechanism. Fairwear Foundation can help you with that. Reducing excessive overtime, eliminating child labor and discrimination, raising wages, this will all contribute to a better life for women garment workers. The good news is, all of this is already part of Fairwear Foundation's Code of Labor Practices. The international standards were set a long time ago. It's down to implementation. When we improve working conditions for women workers, violations of their rights will be ended, inequality diminished and their wages raised. This will not only make it fairer, it will also have a positive impact on their family, their children and on the performance of the factories. Equal opportunities for women will result in a healthier business environment and a healthier economy. Wouldn't it be great if the garment sector not only offers women a paid job, but also a better life? Let's take this opportunity.